Good evening. Uh, we present the news summary. The first batch of Pfizer vaccines arrived in the country this morning. The 35,100 doses is a donation from the American government through the COVAX program. The political economic officer of the American embassy based in Mauritius, Nicholas Christian, was at the airport to hand over the vaccines to the chief executive officer of the Seychelles Healthcare Agency, Dr. Daniel Orange. Vaccination starts this Friday, 10th of September, and among those to be vaccinated are adolescents aged 12 to 17 years. Okay, we're going to start with the vaccination program with Pfizer on Friday with the NHS students. For the um, uh, secondary schools uh, students, we're going to start on Monday. And that will be planned to last for one week. Then subsequently, we also have uh, in between the two doses uh, uh, of vaccines for the adolescents, we'll be also giving to the vulnerable groups. And that has been uh, planned as well, and it will be announced when uh, people can start coming for uh, the Pfizer vaccines. And for those who have not taken any dose of uh, vaccine yet, will they have the opportunity to take the Pfizer vaccine? Yes, this is, uh, we are working on this, especially those who are vulnerable and those who are frontline. Um, we also want to uh, reassure the public that we still have uh, um, Sinopharm uh, vaccines, uh, enough doses to cover all those who have not taken the vaccines. So we will uh, want everyone to come forward First for the Sinopharm vaccines, but we all do have plans to use uh, Pfizer vaccines uh, for people who have not taken um, any vaccines. Yeah. The proposal to increase SPTC bus fare to 10 rupees to be paid by bus card was amongst four options presented to the Cabinet of Ministers. In this one proposal also, commuters uh, using cash are to pay 12 rupees Monday to Saturday and 15 rupees Sundays and public holidays. The three other options were not accepted as the government would still continue to allocate SPTC with huge sums of taxpayers' money as subsidy or the bus fares uh, will have to be more than 10 rupees. The Minister for Transport, Anthony Dejac, gave these explanations to the National Assembly this morning. And Vice President Ahmed Afif has confirmed that a State House employee has been sacked after that person admitted involvement in a plan to poison President Wivel Ramkalawan. Vice President Afif made the statement during a question time in yesterday's session of the National Assembly. In answer to a question from the MNA for Mobikston, Vice President Afif said the executive has the prerogative to relieve a person of their duties if they admit that they were ready to serve the president, tea laced with poison, and this was exactly what happened. Yacht operators have met with the tourism minister, Sylvester Radegond, and the principal secretary for tourism, Shirin Francis. Both the minister and the principal secretary have had first-hand information on the difficulties and challenges being faced by the yacht operators. The tourism ministry is currently working to better regulate the industry. Amongst the issues raised were fuel concessions and work permit for foreign workers. An investigation has begun into whether public officials here knowingly authenticated documents forming part of the world's biggest ever cryptocurrency fraud. The Financial Crimes Investigation Unit is examining evidence provided by a UK-based lawyer about individuals who signed off paperwork concerning the OneCoin scam. OneCoin was traded as a cryptocurrency, but its organizers are now facing jail time for ripping off investors to the tune of $10 billion. OneCoin, once promoted in glossy adverts as a simpler alternative to Bitcoin, was in fact a get-rich-quick Ponzi scheme on a scale never seen before. Nobody can compare to us. OneCoin's founder, Bulgarian self-styled crypto queen Dr. Ruja Ignatova, made a fortune, then vanished along with investors' billions. But some half a billion dollars has now been recovered from bank accounts in Dubai. The trail has led lawyers for the scam's victims to request investigations into officials here acting for offshore businesses. Well, um, we've identified several, two or three powers of attorneys in particular, that, are, that purport to be apostilled by uh, the Seychelles Embassy in Abu Dhabi, I believe. And, but 
notarized by well-known notaries in the uh, Seychelles. The fraud was a classic pyramid scheme. Ordinary people drawn in and recruiting others with money flowing to the top. In Africa and elsewhere, victims lost their life savings. Documents are now being examined by the Financial Crimes Intelligence Unit, who said the crime was not committed in Seychelles, it happened in Dubai. But there are certain things in Seychelles that need to be followed up, in terms of certain people who need interviewing, including people in the judiciary and foreign affairs. As the plot thickens, Hollywood actress Kate Winslet will star in a movie currently in production about the human cost of the fraud that some are calling the crime of the century. The latest claims have also attracted the gaze of investigators at the Financial Services Authority. We want to figure out, okay, and find out if there are any FSA licensed or, or I would say incorporated entities that's involved in the one coin case. Uh, the FSA will treat its investigation with, without any favor or, or anything. We have to see for some if there are IBCs involved and if there are, to take the, the appropriate action. Besides OneCoin, the FSA is currently running several other cryptocurrency inquiries involving offshores as money laundering becomes ever more sophisticated and Seychelles finds itself increasingly a center of interest for cyber criminals. United Seychelles has published more details of the party's 34th Congress, which was held last month. The party said that uh, at its request, the Executive Committee approved a motion to use its power to suspend all rules and regulations. The move was to allow Congress to amend the party's constitution. And in this amendment, the party's Congress increased the members on its National Executive Committee from 15 to 26. The party says its leader will now be allowed to nominate only three members rather than five. In the meantime, a temporary decision allows the party leader to appoint the remaining 11 members of the executive committee until 2025. All the resolutions adopted by the, UA, by the United Seychelles Congress express concern about what it says are the deteriorating uh, deterioration in the living standards and the atmosphere of fear and victimization. Thank you for your attention.